Hello everyone and welcome to another anatomy video. This is Dr. Ayan from the Veterinary Anatomy channel. In this video, we will dissect the branches of the abdominal aorta and talk a little about uh, the blood supply to the different uh, abdominal organs in the dog. So let's get started. So uh, what we've done actually, we removed the uh, uh, greater omentum completely and we removed you know, the connective tissue of the gastrosplenic ligament to show you the blood supply to the uh, stomach, to the liver, to the spleen and other uh, organs inside the abdominal cavity. The blood supply comes uh, directly from the abdominal aorta there, uh, dorsally inside the abdominal cavity. Uh, we can see the aorta, this is the aorta, this is the color vena cava. So from the aorta, the first big branch comes inside the abdominal cavity, uh, the celiac artery. So this is the celiac artery. It's a big one here. The celiac artery gives three main branches, three main branches, one to the liver, one to the stomach, and one to the spleen. The one to the liver is located there. Just a minute. So this one here, this is here, the hepatic artery. The hepatic artery uh, moves toward the, uh, the from the name to, to the, toward the liver, uh, gives uh, you know uh, blood supply to the liver, and it gives some other branches. One of them is the right uh, gastrobiliary artery, and uh, the right uh, gastric artery for to supply the stomach. So this is the hepatic artery. The other branch from the celiac artery is this one here. The left gastric artery the left gastric artery moves directly to the lesser curvature of the stomach and the final one here the third one is the splenic artery again so from the celiac artery let me just show you this is the celiac artery from the from the abdominal aorta the celiac artery it gives three branches one is the splenic artery toward the spleen look how it moves toward the spleen this is the splenic artery the second one moves toward the uh, lesser curvature of the stomach called the left gastric artery, this one here. And uh, the final branch here, uh, the hepatic artery to the liver. The hepatic artery to the liver. Again, if you follow the hepatic artery, it will go to the liver and uh, it gives some branches, extra branches. Two of them are for the stomach, which are you know, the right gastric artery, which will go also to the uh, lesser curvature of the stomach and meet the left gastric artery, the, this one here. And we have uh, uh, from the hepatic artery another one called the right uh, gastrobiblioic artery, which will move uh, to the uh, greater curvature of the stomach. And it meets there the extension um, of the splenic artery. The splenic artery, as you can see here, so this is the splenic artery again. It comes at this level here. It gives a lot of branches to the spleen. Let me just put it this way. This is the splenic artery under my finger. It gives a lot of branches to the spleen, as you can see. At the same time, it moves along the helos of the spleen like this and gives a lot of small branches to the stomach called the short gastric arteries short gastric arteries and that's why guys in carnivores we are not allowed to suture if we want to remove the spleen for example we are not allowed to cut or to close or to suture the splenic artery directly here because if you do this if you do, do this you stop the blood supply to this part of the stomach completely and what we have to do in this case yes you have to do exactly as I, I, I've done here, you have to close and suture these small arteries toward the spleen, but not the splenic artery itself and not the short gastric arteries. So this is very important. Yes, you have to close a lot, sometimes 12, sometimes more small arteries here, one by one, and after that you can remove the spleen. And in this case, we will keep the blood supply to the uh, the blood supply to the stomach, yeah? Otherwise, if you cut the main uh, splenic artery, uh, this part of the stomach will die, you know, after a few hours after the operation. Well, now quickly here we have the uh, hiatus or the opening uh, through the diaphragm for the aorta. 
So here, this is the diaphragm, this is the aorta. It moves through the diaphragm from the thorax to the abdominal cavity. The first two branches uh, are, the first one here is the zodiac artery. Zodiac artery, as we described, you know, gives three big branches, one to the spleen. This one is to the spleen, the splenic artery. This is the first one here, the splenic artery. The second one to the stomach is the left gastric artery. And the third one is to the liver called the hepatic artery. This is the three, sorry, just a minute, three main branches of the celiac artery. The celiac artery, hepatic, left gastric, and uh, the splenic artery, okay? Next to the celiac artery, next to the celiac artery, a little bit caudally here, we have what's called the cranial mesenteric artery. This is the cranial mesenteric artery, the second branch of the uh, abdominal aorta. It moves here and gives a lot of branches, including the jejunal arteries to the jejunum, including the iliocolic artery to the ilium and the colon, and uh, um, the right colic artery, for example. All of this comes from, come from the uh, cranial mesenteric artery. Cranial mesenteric artery, this one here, responsible to supply the small and large intestine, not completely, because the descending colon plus the rectum is supplied by the caudal mesenteric artery. Here at the level between the uh, celiac artery and the cranial mesenteric artery, we can see these two structures. If you can see them, this one here is what's called the celiac ganglion. Celiac ganglion. ganglion uh, yeah, celiac ganglion. Next to it here, we have another ganglion called the cranial mesenteric ganglion. They belong to the autonomic nerve system, of course. And um, these two ganglia, uh, are somehow adheres to each other here in the way that we cannot separate between them. And uh, from these two ganglia here, we have a lot of nerve fibers going everywhere, following the arteries to the target organs in this area. And that's why it looks uh, like a sun at the end. And that's why they name both ganglia or all of this structure here as a solar plexus. Solar plexus. Uh, you know, uh, solar plexus includes the celiac ganglion and the cranial mesenteric ganglion where the location of them um, go directly at the level between the celiac artery and the cranial mesenteric artery and you will find them there this is the celiac ganglion and the cranial mesenteric ganglion forming the solar plexus there from this plexus we have a lot of nerve, fib nerve fibers following the arteries of the celiac artery and uh, the branches of the celiac artery and the branches of the cranial mesenteric artery to the target organs. Now we removed all organs from the abdominal uh, cavity and we will go through all branches of the abdominal aorta uh, behind the diaphragm here. Uh, directly from the aorta, we have the celiac artery. This is the celiac artery, which gives, you know, as we say, three main branches. As you can see here, um, we have the splenic artery, we have the hepatic artery, and we have the uh, left gastric artery from the celiac artery. The next branch from the abdominal aorta, where the abdominal aorta here, let me just show you. This is the abdominal aorta here. The second branch is the cranial mesenteric artery. So this is the cranial mesenteric artery to supply the small and large intestine. Not complete, not, uh, you know, the descending uh, the rectum, but branch uh, behind the uh, cranial mesenteric artery directly from the aorta here we can see these two branches moving toward the uh, diaphragm and sublight this is what's called the caudal phrenic artery uh, next to it from the abdominal aorta we have another two branches moving laterally toward the muscles uh, the abdominal muscles under the uh, uh, adrenaline gland this is the adrenaline gland so toward the muscles abdominal muscles here we have the cranial abdominal artery left and right the next branch, the next branch from um, from the uh, abdominal aorta, here is the renal arteries. We have the right and the left renal arteries. Here, of course, we have the renal veins, you know, to the caudal vena cava. But let's skip to the arteries. So, renal arteries. After that, a little bit caudally here, we can see the origin of these two very small or uh, arteries left and right this is the testicular arteries testicular arteries one for each uh, testicle testicular arteries originate directly from the aorta as you can see and moves finally through the inguinal canal to the testicles here and there uh, if you follow the 
uh, abdominal aorta cauda at specific level here we can see this artery called the um, this one here at the caudal mesenteric artery the caudal mesenteric artery is responsible to supply if you see it so it's responsible to supply the um, rectum and the descending colon so the uh, caudal mesenteric artery at this level gives two branches one to the descending colon and one to the uh, rectum the, that one to the uh, descending colon called the left uh, colic artery and that one to the rectum is the cranial colic uh, cranial rectal artery so if you follow uh, after that the uh, abdominal aorta it gives left and right here what's called the um, deep circumflex uh, iliac artery deep circumflex iliac artery here and there and after that, uh, the abdominal aorta will be divided and gives two big branches here and there. This is the external iliac artery, external iliac artery. This one here is the external the right uh, external iliac artery. And on the uh, other side, we have the left one. This artery is responsible finally to uh, supply the hind limb. Uh, after that, the abdominal aorta moves a little bit caudally and gives at that level here two final arteries two final arteries here and there. This is the internal iliac arteries. This is the internal iliac arteries, which will give some branches to the organs inside the pelvic. So this is the main uh, arteries from, or main branches from the abdominal aorta.